Pretty quiet, huh? When they go to sleep, pretty quiet. Those crickets. We're going to have to do tons better. Got lots of, lots of talent to be doing a lot of good things. You know, we tend to not want to do much of anything. Well, I tend to believe that uh, we can do nothing, and I guess we can choose to do that, and let it all come on uh, the next guy, I guess. And that somehow hasn't worked out for me to be able to be okay with. And I really don't know why. I see lots of people that will just wait and wait and wait. And I'm realizing the more I get into doing all this, the more I realize the more of us that wait, the more the, no the nonsense and nastiness keeps coming on us. And if anybody can't see the reality game show this world has now become, uh, the stupidity, the cockistocracy that is, rises to the top, that rules everybody because they all just take it. I, I don't know really much more to more to say about some of this stuff, and I wonder what uh, the, the real reason uh, that I, I do anything. And then I get an email, <laughs> and I or I make a chat, and we get to making on on subject matter specific things. We get to move pretty pretty fast, but pretty quickly along. A lot of questions start to drop, the uh, uncertainty start to drop. Uh, more certainty, more focus comes into bear. That focus, that starts to put you on the right path to really becoming much more capable. And m most of the time you won't see any of that until you do. Uh, as myself, you have to go through this lesson somehow uh, about what we're up against. And these are people that, you know, big cheesy smile right in your face, not w don't care that they'll stab you. They're, they're going to stab you in the back. Uh, you know, I don't know, understand that whole world, but there it is. It is our world. And so... We can uh, walk around being having a bunch of knives in our back, I guess, or, or watch our our um, our future, our, our progeny, our offspring grow into having their their knives in their back uh, because the whole thing is they don't want to kill anybody; they, they just want to use you as a beast of burden. There are these people that have figured you out better than you've understood yourself, and somehow that doesn't set well with me. Notwithstanding, I really don't have a whole lot. To, there ain't gonna be. <laughs> Anybody looking over my grave uh, for a family? It's just not going to happen. There's this lots in my life I knew coming along, though I didn't know uh, that this wasn't going to be. And I didn't know why. It wasn't how I planned it out. Uh, but so partly I don't know why I care. But I do care. And I care about people who are earnestly not wanting to be run down. And to me, the biggest problem I'm, the biggest problem for me is watching these men who've been in prison for decades getting out because there was just no justice rendered, and the excuse is we did the best we could. We should have never been okay with that, because that devolves, that attitude devolves down, and it ends up being all kinds of problems that we see that everyone then puts their head in, in the uh, behind a woodshed bag, a, a bucket of sand. We all carry them around with us, I suppose. Uh, today I'm going to start someplace else, but we're going to end up going down, you know, what I, being coming on us this whole time, it speaks to the silent weapons of quiet wars thing. I think I'm gonna. I'm not sure if I'm gonna title it this, but the program's gonna be more about the welcome to the largest limited hangout in the history of mankind. Uh, this is an, just an analogy of how we walk ourselves into a problem, and we don't care to not do that. Uh, it's all around us now. You know, in some regard, I'm not saying don't engage it. I'm saying you just have to know that battlefield, and there's ways to go through it. And I guess that's the other the other light in my life is that. You can walk through the valley of the shadow of death, if I can put it in these terms on this day, and you will go through it. But you're going to have to stay in the narrow path to do that. And you're not going to be able to use your prejudices and listening to me to do that. In fact, talking to a few people, chatting or uh, emails, it starts to become a little bit more apparent. I always have to make a comment. Whoever else I've watched out there, and I've watched lots of people do their thing, they don't come at it the way I do at, at all. There's a subtlety about what the way you really have to start to do it. Uh, than what I've ever heard anybody ever talk about. And really, you can't really appreciate that, I don't think, until you start to do it and you start to work out how the subtlety works. In fact, one of the chats last night, I said, you don't walk, I don't look at this as a defensive move. It's an offense. We're under attack. Whatever you call it, whatever it is you're doing, you're under attack. And so there's a way to approach that. You can be a defensive or you can become offensive. And there's all the things out there to tell us how to do that. If we were just to start looking at the right thing, not listen to everyone, uh, well, listen to what your direction is, and what you've chosen to make right, that, that'll start to line it up. But uh, welcome to the largest limited hangout in the history of mankind, the interwebs. They call it a web for a reason, I'm sure.
And this is going to be your April Fool's Day reminder that the cricket, uh, crickets are considered by those running the cockerstocracy uh, to be quite fine. They love crickets. These are for all the, all the April Fools that are out there. We get told every once a year that we are the fools. And the reason why we're fools is because we are the crickets. And they uh, just love that. Silo Weapons of Quiet War has told us you're going to plug in. They're going to take advantage and you're not going to care. And I keep telling you that's what you're going to do. And for the most part, that's what you do. This will be BTW RLM 260 on all of you all that are on past cast, broadcast, recast, and any cast, minds cast, whatever. Uh, now on that point, I go minds.com. Uh, may, I may be seeing a limited time on minds.com. I'm now feeling like a second class citizen over there, though I'm not going to, I'm not going to throw that out. I'm waiting for them. Uh, Jack, uh, the guy who, one of the guys who started minds.com says that they're going to work on a pro, they work out a problem. Apparently, I'm a unique case, folks. And in a way, that was okay, but I don't think I'm a unique case. I, uh, folks, I, you got to now, with the token system, you have to now get, cough up a phone number. Now, they say they're not using that but to create a hash number, but, folks, uh, we're going to find out that all this stuff is, once you put it in the digital realm, it's forever. So, to me, that's registration, and that's just a counter to my whole sense. And so right now I'm a second class citizen where I can't I can't participate in their rewards to continue to promote the broadcast. I have the points I have, and I guess this is a warning to all y'all minds. I don't know if you can even send me anything as a bonus as you have. And thank you for all that you've done. I'm not quite sure what Minds is doing. And when they went to the blockchain, folks, I'm telling you this is not a decentralized condition. This is a centralizing cause. And until they work out a way to create a hashtag, because they do have a problem, and I'm not going to deny they, they have a problem with uh, apparently make people uh, overdo things and make lots of accounts, and they try to participate in the rewards section so they can get lots of these things that are now tokenized. And so that means money, apparently, at the other end. Well, I've never been interested in that. But that's now me. I don't have a phone, so I have to... Uh, I'm now a unique case. And then it found out within days, I'm not a unique case. Lots of people don't have a phone, or they don't want to be registered. And so, not to be labor this, the point is that this, this internet, this, this, um, this limited hangout, PSYOP, called the internet, it really gets you to subtly bring you into wanting to participate with all this stuff. And so I'm not sure where all this goes for, uh, for this, uh, for me. Uh, I've never tied into it. It interests me to no end. I think there's a way to get stuff done. There's a thought in me that if I could focus on it, I, I might be able to come up with, with, the, uh, with some of the things that need to be done to actually keep this thing decentralized and private. And I've said, I think once you can figure out a way to do that, you can, you can predict an answer to the future and position that anybody might come, any authority might come, you're going to be positioned well and you're going to have a system that will work. Until someone understands what that is, this is just a big honeypot. And I don't understand why you don't have more talent coming to, to look at it. I know there's talent behind the scenes doing stuff, but I really don't understand. I don't know that they have the insight that I have to see this. No, one of the insights, and I wish thought to be really de in depth. The, again, the analysis really has to be looked at. Is what is, what is the battlefield you're up against? You have to admit into that. You, you can't deny it. And then it is, how do we work and operate in that battlefield? And I said, one of the things you might be able to do is you take your productive capacity, that's yours and yours alone, and you then try to monetize that and make it private. Another thought, and I don't know how this would be done, it's just a thought, because the, you're going to find out that all this uh, blockchaining is not secret at all. Absolutely not. We've heard this over and over, but it's absolutely not uh, privatized. Is that you're probably going to have to make blockchains that are private, running on private places that everyone understands where to go, and, and sandboxed, if I can use the term. In other words, it's like a long hallway with a bunch of doors. And if you don't have the right code to get into the the agreement on the blockchain, you don't have a right to see what's in there. And I'm not a de I haven't thought about this in depth, but the, we're in a very serious time when I see, I guess the seriousness is not for me because I'm not participating. I'm being actually cut out. And to me, it, smile, it makes me smile a bit, but it's, I'm sad about that. Because all the rest of you thinking you're going into this, it's, it's the alternative. It's not. It's just a behavioral control tool. And this is the big deal. So I'm not, well, no, I'm going to sound, I sound kind of negative, I guess, on this technology, but I'm really not. It's just, I don't think that we have the appreciation of what these people that are in control of it actually do and what it's all for. And all that's written down. You don't have to go far to figure out what it is. And that's how you start to learn how to avoid things. As I was explaining the subtlety of what I do, I don't go in and defend myself. 
I set up a record that shows the per, the, the, the the offender is actually the a criminal offender, and then I move a, a collateral to that. And, and it's a whole different type of thing. I'm, I don't know. Like I like I said, it's the Aikido thing. You use the other other uh, the offenders uh, mass and force and energy against them eventually, but you have to you have to engage it a bit in order to make that happen. And so we're given lots of information that's not correct. Uh, we buy into it. We want to make it easy. Uh, listen, I'm I'm a big I'm a big procrastinator. Uh, maybe a lot less than I used to be, but uh, I like to wait. I like to enjoy life, but it just doesn't seem that we're going to be able to do that here. And so, what does that mean? We're, we're being run by a wherever you look. There's a caucus dog. There's some authority out there that says that they have more authority than you, and they're gonna and they have the power, actual power, to have that happen. I don't understand how that works, but it does. And so, until we address that. A lot of these things that we see in the world, these uh, occupations, I just call them occupations. They're not the type of occupation you might think about like you're going to work for yourself. No, these are the international invasions that happen right under your nose that are legal because they can you let you continue to let them. Why? Because you're crickets. Remember, that's the Opera, April Fool's Day. That's your notice that you're a cricket. Unless you're not. No excuse will alleviate that that obligation. Uh, just a pretty funny thing uh, in my mind. We all think we can uh, excuse it away, look away. And, and really, you actually can't. And uh, part of me is really disappointed that with all this fantastic technology, all the material science coming out, all the science that really exists, all the stuff we're finding out that we didn't know that's different and how it makes it even better, we're not coming together as a people to take advantage of that and live by that example. We're allowing these people that run the caucusocracy to take us down because we're crickets. All of you guys that know how to do the blockchain and this and that and whatever and do the programming, something I, I can do a bit, but I wasn't the master. I couldn't be. I told you, I can't be that guy. I knew that guy when I saw him. It wasn't me. That aren't applying these things to figure out how to work through this system that we're in to actually make it privatized. I'm, uh, I'm astonished, actually. It, it, all the, there's a lot of tools available to us. I, I can I saw the I see the glimpses here and there. We're just not taking in our hands. We allow the system to beat us down. We allow it to take up our time without coming up with concise, fast responses to it. And that's the other thing that's I don't get into this. Is ever said, well, we're going to do our legal processes in the courts? No, I, I go in, make the record that shows they're criminal, and then I move on collateral to that. It takes hardly no time at all. I don't engage that thing. And I'm not. I don't want to disrate wage you from talk, listening to people who may tell you that because that may be the only formula you have. This is not. This is not a joke. What they come in and destroy your lives over with all this system. What they just come in your life like that stakeholder, and and then they then you're dealt with. And that's the hardest one to deal with. As we were talking again last night in the chat, the traffic issues like we talk about, they're the toughest because there's no. Well, unless you're smart and intelligent, I guess, and you have worked it out before it happened, you're going to be met with some force and effect that you haven't had a record for, and it's a little bit more difficult to make that record after the fact. Not impossible, and I've showed you how to. I've talked about how you do it to turn the table, uh, but if you don't understand it or don't quite understand what what I'm talking about, it you're not going to have that in your in your disposal. That's not going to be the word in your mouth. It's not going to be the the pen in, in your hand to your paper. That's not going to be exposing that there's someone that's a criminal uh, that pretends uh, that's using a costume to do so, and that's a crime. You're not going to have any of that to happen. And so getting onto the costumes and crimes and the mischaracterization, let's move on to the tabs. I want to get onto something pretty quickly today about this, um, just showing you left and right, you have to know what, what you're doing. But uh, on this day, a pretty interesting story came out a couple of days ago. I think this all anticipates lots of things. Uh, Wall Street Journal issues embarrassing correction for claiming Moses struck Iraq for water, not a rock. Pretty interesting little twist. This is not an April Fool's story, but you know we could play that. Uh, the Wall Street Journal issued that uh, what may be the best correction ever for a story which quoted Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu as saying Moses brought water from Iraq instead of from a rock. The WSJ was trolled mercilessly on Twitter for the gaff, the gaffe, whatever your linguistics is, that had injected an unexpected geopolitical twist into the centuries-old biblical tale 
in which Moses struck a rock to extract water for the Israelites that were wandering the desert after the exodus from Egypt. So you know I don't look at these stories for the face value. I look for what you're being told. And I'm looking for the story that's telling you the truth by telling you a lie. And they wrap all this, they tell you it's a geopolitical twist. Well, that was all probably the plan. But did you understand something? I, right in the story, first paragraph, it says, the quoted Israeli Prime Minister ben, Benjamin Netanyahu. He's an Israeli. Yet Moses struck the rock to provide water to the Israelites. I think uh, Benjamin Netanyahu is missing a couple letters. Because as an Israeli, he is not necessarily an Israelite. And I want everybody to consider this very deeply and listen to what I've said before about how we would go through and parse this through, even if we reduce the thing, and we should, I think, now that I've been looking at it, down to the right of possession of the land or the right of the of the inhabitants of the land. Give me your title. And who are you people? They weren't in the Bible, called Israelis. And this has been the subtle twist that we all put on ourselves. Not the nice, oh, yeah, we got water from Iraq. No, 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 this is a geopolitical statement. And this brings up the, trying to bring you the authority of what Benjamin Netanyahu is talking about, when in fact, he may or may not be worthy of what he's saying. And it's not an Israeli that has a right to say. Those are the occupiers. And for all that I'm insulting, you, it really it doesn't matter anymore because that is the adulteration. Thou shalt not commit adultery. That's an adulteration. On this day, there are people that have a land that was given to them. We did the research with all the books that are authoritative for it. We found out there's a people that lived in a land, and they were first recognized in that land right below Jerusalem. They could be called Jews, as the Strong's Concordance twist, you know, readjusted. But that's not what even what the name was. They weren't Israelis for sure. And the tribes of people that they come from were Israelites. They were uh, from, they were the, the sons and daughters uh, uh, from uh, Israel, a man. He wasn't Israeli. So, well, I don't want to get too more deep. You, I think the point should be made by now. This is what they do to us. They get us to agree that the occupier over there has a stand, uh, has a, sta a standing uh, to be on a land to, to hurt other people, and it's not true. We make a little twist of a joke. Oh, it's not from Iraq; it's from a rock. In fact, that's about all that you would have gotten out of that, because the Israeli doesn't necessarily have the tie to being an Israelite, because an Israeli appears to be an imposition by Britain on a land for a movement called Zionism. And in, I'm not even going to judge, I'm not judging one or the way and the other at that point. I'm saying we have a serious problem and people are dying over this adulteration. So you continue to be the April Fool on this, but they're telling us the truth of certain things if we'll look right forward to it. You make the mistake to call the people the Israelis that are supposed to be the Israelites that have the right to the land, and you've just been duped. What that proves out, I'm not, gonna, I'm not even saying, because that would require people to look in on what they believe is theirs to do. And so on this day, we see an adulteration that shouldn't, should, should, we should have stopped. The crickets in us, those that are, that are not stopping it, are, are allowing this to perpetrate. And people are dying around this, this lie. And I want to see the lie. I want it stopped. I, I don't care how this settles out in the truth. I just want it stopped myself. Whatever my words say, and however offense or, or agreement you may have, is really irrelevant to the point that we have a serious lie in the world that continues to go that needs to be stopped. And as long as we don't arrest that crime, the crime continues, and now we're accessories. That's on us. It folds out these Israeli conditions this occupation folds out to affect more than that land. This is the other problem, which was very interesting news to come down this week on this coming into this day. For those of you that under, that believe in all of it, I'm I'm just talking in the neutrality. There's some people that believe we got this higher cause call, calling, spirituality, all this other, and I don't see in one place hardly that it's ever that it's even being effectuated. We'll give lip service to it all. 
Something came up this last week that was kind of interesting, and I'm not sure where this is going to go either. But uh, uh, the United States invasion of a foreign land underneath the, uh, the, the fraud of the war on terror that it creates uh, may be, may be, may be coming to an end, except that we're just going to hand the baton to someone else. Trump freezes funds for the YPG PKK held areas in Syria. This was the balkanization of the Syria plan. Uh, this is a big story. I don't know where it's going to go, but Trump is saying they're going to withhold $200 million uh, in funds from the recovery area that the Kurds have. And this is also working with Turkey. So be careful. And this is not necessarily an answer either. Uh, this is a bunch of geopolitical stuff going on here. But Trump is saying he may very well pull back the funds that the United States is doing in America, he says, is going to be out of Syria. Now, in the same week, France steps up and says they're going to take over the Manjib area and all this other stuff in Syria. But to be pulling out the army, uh, the, United, uh, the military of uh, United States military out of Syria uh, uh, can't be but good, uh, given that that whole thing is based on an entirely different, uh, otherwise other plan to cause these Israeli interests to expand throughout the Middle East, and it's not been shown to be legitimate. It's actually by international recognition, acknowledgement been known to be an occupation not actually viable or lawful there. And I wish people understood more the terminology that's being used in the context. I see this a lot. Everyone wants to know these definitions. They don't, you don't do it right. You don't understand that those words just have no meaning really until you find the context for them. And then if someone's used them in a private sense and you have to look in the, there's a private public, if you will, not public private. It's a private public. In other words, there can be open private closed agreements that uh, are international in, in their uh, approach, uh, that they, those people that wrote that agreement, are the determiners of their terms. The author of the documents are the determiner of the terms, not you. So how that works in the United States, like for the Constitution, the judiciary has been given the power, though this is incorrect too, to interpret that Constitution. Now, that's incorrect too. I don't want to get to all you, uh, you lawyer, you know, you, you, technical accuracy mongers out there to jump on me about that. But I'm trying to get a conversation through that there's a, the judiciary is supposed to look at, at some of this. And that's how that worked because the, it's been said that the, uh, the framers of that constitution, the authors of the constitution made that so. Nobody else has a say on what that is. The determination of what that was was given over to what's called a judiciary. Good, bad, or indifferent. And that's how this works. The Constitution, though it affects a territory, was private. And so the author uh, is, uh, of that have private terminology to that. And this is where I say, you got to know, if you're going to deal with that entity, you better deal in the terms as it deals with them, not as you fabricate in your mind that you think they are. And I hear lots, of, I mean, I just see lots of this going on. It really kind of drives me nuts. And I own it drives me nuts because people are getting hurt under this delusion they've created for themselves. When the answer is really right in front of our face. So Trump did uh, did this, going to freeze the going to freeze the the funds. I don't know. You know freezing the funds doesn't mean that it's, they can't be rethawed. I uh, don't really know the underlying ever. Don't know how this guy's going to go work on all this stuff to uh, really pull the United States out of the mess it made. And going to hand, uh, Trump says we're going to hand it over to others. Well, then Ken, uh, France pops up. Well. I just want I just want those people to get back to some kind of normalcy, and we can start looking at this whole thing again if it's our if our if it's our business. Uh, I'm not so sure it is. But so while uh, Trump is going to stop the stop the, the the enforcement of the shooting over in um, the Syria area, in the balkanized areas, he also has advanced the rule for the DOJ regarding and precipitated by this thing in Florida that I told you was a movement. I told you this was an end run about some things, and people aren't paying attention to the right stuff, uh, that uh, you could face 10 years in prison if you don't surrender your bump stock in 90 days. So while he's not going to pay for shooting and killing people in uh, Syria, he's going to steal these bump stocks, these accoutrements on, a, on, a, on, a, on an arm, which you have a right to keep him bare. Now, I don't know that a bump stock is all that. And, you know, I just don't think it's all that. I guess it could help. If you know your uh, arm uh, and your leg, but your arm in particular here, if you know your arm, you don't necessarily need this little uh, aid. 
so in some regard, it's kind of irrelevant. But see, to me, this is more of the encroachment where it says in the prohibition against government interference, it shall not infringe the right to keep and bear, which includes the right to acquire, and the right to be prepared as you choose. This is not as the government chooses. Now, what did the government do? The government said, used their judiciary and said, well, we, no, it only meant what we say you can have. C completely ridiculous, and I heard crickets on that for years. I mean, it's not us. This is the time before us, long times before us. But that's still the truth coming in here. Uh, you could face 10 years now because they're addressing, they're adjusting, they're infringing upon the arm you would choose to fight the government that would oppress you. And you're not. And so they're going to come and take this little thing away. Now, again, I don't think they're neither here nor there. Oh, they're cool. They're kind of neat. Uh, ingenious little device. But there's other ways to do exactly what this thing does if you know your arm and practice. But the, so the, they're coming after you folks, and you're sitting there as crickets, not doing anything. And this is really kind of as simple as I've been telling you about those of you that smoke uh, cannabis, and you know the lie about that, and getting it turned around, like Kratom, clean water, fluoride. We heard all, we heard, I can tell you that by bringing the new, the notice to us on how it works, how to make it work, and how to get it better. And I hear crickets from everybody I spoke, speak to. And I have to, I'm, I'm encouraged a bit, a lot more of your call and contact to me, and we're moving through your, your thing you want to make right. I just, that thrills me to no end. I do thank you for, for stepping in and doing that for you, for yourself, and then I appreciate that you ask me what I might think about it to kind of, as I tell you, put you on your own trailhead since I, I get you on your path a little quicker than you might do it listening to many other places on the, on the internet. Uh, that web, uh, that web of sticky stuff that can uh, really mess you around. But, uh, facing, um, 10 years for a bump stock accoutrement's not good. So how do you stop this? This is an executive branch in position, and guess what? There, there, there's a process they have to go through. I keep telling you about how this all works. This is just not what they can just bring out. They have to, they have to go through this process. However the reason is, I, I, I've talked about it, but I don't, I'm not here to talk about that today. So Trump brings this out. The DOJ is going to impose a rule about this. And guess what has to happen? It has to go to the Federal Register. Well, guess what has to happen with that? Keep up with me. You know, those of you that have the answer, call it up, put in your chats, whatever. Be active, interactive with this thing. They have to make what? They have to make a comment period. I said one of the aspects of how you address this thing is to be engaged with the process that's been provided in due process to uh, that they use to to uh, to interfere and infringe upon you legally. And then you all complain about legal, but you never stepped in like they did at Dap Do Dapple. They didn't do it right. They got beat down, and I got I'm the one who got the who got the, the mud slung at me. I, I got the arrows slung at me, trying to tell everybody. No, there's a certain way to go about that. That's your due process. Why don't you follow it? You do have an argument. Put it forward. No, you don't do that. You all get upset at me uh, for explaining that you have a certain way to do it. It's not the way you thought. Or you don't do it anymore because you're not interested. Well. If you allow other uh, people to come in and infringe rights that are to everyone, whether you agree with it or not, it's to everybody, you're just accessorizing your, the, the theft of your rights that are supposed to be prohibited uh, to government on this issue. They're going after bump stocks. Uh, they're going after the rest of it. Again, now they got to, if it looks like something, that's a, that's a value. It's aesthetic value without, va without value. I mean, it's an aesthetic of, uh, observation without value. And they're using something without value to take a valuable thing, which is your ability, without question, to finally organize up when it finally got so bad and use arms in order to protect yourself against the very government oppressor that's coming to take your guns. Just like they were told, uh, we were told by these people who authored the document. Uh, now, so what do they got to do? They have to go through a process because they're making a rule about this. And so I'm going to be... I'm going to be disappointing myself again. I, I talked about the Cray Tom. I talked about the cannabis. I talked about the fluoride. I talked about all these things that you can do. Simple little letters don't cost you hardly but, a, what, 50 cents to send out and some time to write it. And research the, the subject matter and send a letter. No one's going to come to your house and throw you in jail over it, at least not yet. Uh, you have all this. It's no jeopardy. And will you raise a pen to paper, a typewriter, a key to a screen? What Do you do any of that? to engage this rulemaking process that the Trump is going to try and shove down your throat, the theft of your bump stocks. And then are you going to then 
research the subject matter in order to provide a very formidable response about how they don't have the right to do that. As I've outlined prior, you don't have to use your own thoughts to start yourself. I've talked about where you start this conversation. Is it a silver bullet? No. Is it an answer? No. I don't know what an answer is when you're dealing with a caucusocracy, but at least you make the record. Now, what are you doing? Oh, I'm not making a comment. Oh, good. It's not going to help. Not going to work. Why? Well, because you didn't make the right comment or you didn't plan into the future to realize once you made your comment, you now have standing to go sue them in an injunction, what I've been talking to you. It's not an on and on carried out process. If you do it right, there is no question. I told you it lasts only the time the rules say that an injunction lasts. That should be less than two weeks. Where do I find that? In the Rules of Civil Procedure for Injunctions. I don't make any of this stuff up, folks. This is all straight for us to be sitting there to do. It's a little bit difficult, yeah, because most of us are lazy. We haven't worked that muscle of being vigilant against the encroachment. But as you start getting more involved and stop your yapping and you're talking about all you think you know and all the definitions you think you can use and all the things you think you know about the way it's supposed to be and all the historic things that are supposed to be irrelevant because we were supposed to run from England and not engage it because it was no good, when you start to settle down what's reality here and now, and let, stop looking for all the excuses, all the exits to not be responsible, I think you're going to find this process to be pretty rewarding, and you, it doesn't really take up a lot of time once you get or your desk organized, if I can say it that way. Now, I've got a link for you to the re, uh, federalregister.gov for those of you that are in, interested in, in your uh, gun rights. I would hope that you would approach it right from the from the absolute prohibition against government of the Second Amendment. Not what you think about it, not what the not what the issue is and what the courts have said, but really what that they have no right to make an issue of this. And say it in, in, in a short amount of words so you don't have to you don't have to go too far and make such a big deal about it. You don't have to go to historic presentation. You just have to show that how they don't have the jurisdiction to do adjust it based on your right to choose. And the, in other words, the go the Second Amendment doesn't doesn't say that it's going to be determined by the government what you decide to use to, to fight their oppression. It's like the mining law. I mean, put all this stuff, this is all grants and things. It's all the same type of law, whether you all want to agree to understand it or not, I don't know. But mining law was a simple law for the roads. The construction of the highways hereby granted. 1866 Act of uh, Section 8. Construction of the highways is hereby granted. That was it. There was no mode. Like you hear, oh, you can only drive this thing or that thing on the road. There was no construction method, no no standards, no nothing. The, the right is granted to use a space on the unappropriated public lands for highways. That was it. Pretty cool. Well, this is the Second Amendment. It's the same thing. There, there's no mode. There's no restriction. The mining grant for the mineral highways is that you use it for the highway. There's no infringement upon that. There's no infringement the government can do. That sits in equity for remedy if they do come and interfere and infringe. The miner has the right to go get the minerals on those roads that he typically would. Ma roads. Ma ro well, the miner made the roads. It, no one, he didn't ask nobody for money to build those roads. And then he has the obligation, if he wants to continue to do it, to make to make the payments uh, to keep moving his mineral out. No one appreciates any of this stuff. The, the rights in Americans, uh, the, the producer in this country, are paramount. And yet we forget about that. And you're all a producer if you just situate yourself just a little better than what you think you are. And so we have this un unconditioned right to keep and bear, and we have the antecedent position that can't be infringed as well. You just have to go research where all that is and bring it forward and make a documented approach in this Federal Register process which you have a link, and it has all kinds of information on where they think they took this thing, and you're going to come back if you so choose, not be a cricket, don't be the April Fool, or the May Fool, or the May Flower, and you start doing what we need to do, and you can start to put a, an assertion against the imposition, and this is kind of an interesting one, because like I said, I don't care about the bump stock part. You can fire a, you can fire a, a semi-automatic pretty quick if you understand your uh, it almost does the same darn thing here as, as a bump stock if you know how to hold it. Right? So, those of you who know your weapons, you know that. So, it's not even about the bump stock. It's about the encroachment is what you're on. But you're able to make a record that's substantial to the prohibition against the government encroachment. Instead of going, oh, this is for hunting. Oh, and I need it for my self-defense. So, that's the antecedent, right? But you prepare it 
up front that the government had no right to encroach. Is a simple process here in the Federal Register to go after and make your comment, to give your standing self standing, get yourself into an equity case, to enjoin the rule if it ever comes in, and be the one that starts making the arguments, or get together with a bunch of you that can make these arguments. And when you're done, I mean, do you have, are you sitting in jail? No, you're not, you're no jeopardy here. And then you're actually starting to assert your vigilance against the encroachment in the way that I think it was supposed to be done, though. I don't like that. I know you don't like it. But that's the way this place called the United States of America was set up. So we're, we're slave to that part because there's the, the reality is there's, a, there's a, always going to be an invasion against you, what you thought you wanted to do in what you consider to be free within that, that constraint, the freedom. And so here it is today, folks. You can whine and talk about all this stuff. You can say you don't care about bump stocks. I'm saying it's an infringement. They're just trying to get a toehold, like all this other stuff. And it's a very simple, easy way to do some reading on some really focused information and then engage the comment system the way it's supposed to do, just like they tell you, and then give yourself the standing. And if it doesn't go, they don't do it quite right, then you get to go make it a, a decision in a court and show that that court has no right to, to make a decision counter to the prohibition. Wouldn't that be cool? I'm here as an equity action that you infringed upon my right by this rule, and then they can't answer, so that's a default to the answer. The court has no right to engage it, so no, I'm not going to get their permission. For those of you I'm trying to anticipate, I get all this nonsense. Oh, you're going to get their permission. No, I'm not. I'm going to break it in a position that is not, not an issue that the court, uh, the court has to answer correctly. If they don't answer correctly, it's a bunch of fluff. They didn't answer. That's a default. And so it's a certain way to set this up. You can do it. You have to start this one in the because I made it a rule. You have to start in what the way the process of due process. You want to talk about your common law is all you have now is due process. Here it is. So deny it and you deny your due process uh, assertion. I don't know what you're talking about no more about, oh, the government does bad. You're allowing it. Maybe you're doing this because you got some brain problems. Maybe you, maybe we're affected, as I keep saying, you epigenetically affected. Maybe the stuff you have, you put plaque on you. Now you don't have plaque on your teeth. You got plaque. On, same plaque sits on your brain. Have you ever think about that? So we got these impediments that keep us from from doing listening to the wisdom behind the woodshed. Uh, to start to engage again what we should have never non, not engaged, to go after the very things that these people, these insane people, the caucusocracy doesn't want you to have because they're caucusocracy. They don't want you to have anything that can get them out of where they are. And, and you just complain uh, against that? It's, it's a nonsense. It's, it's completely nonsense on its face. So self-evident nonsense. It's a, another counter-insanity. But uh, we can get maybe help a little bit of that as scientists remove Alzheimer brain plaques in mice. The new uh, animal research shines light on the therapy designed to rid the brain of much of the sticky amyloid plaque associated with early stage Alzheimer's disease. Experts have long viewed the plaque buildup as largely symptomless marker for the future Alzheimer's risk, and many believe the process is a root cause of the disease. But unlike prior anti-amyloid efforts, the new therapy narrowly targets a specific protein called APOE lodged within such plaque buildup. It's the glue that holds it together. Won't read any more. You can get the Blogcaster link. You can go on the internet right now and go read it uh, for yourself. Uh, the, I want to point out first the protein, and I want to point out the problem, the uh, unintended consequences and all this pharma, chemo, vaccine stuff, and uh, genetic manipulation creates unintended proteins. So here's a protein that's not unintended, it's a consequence. It's the glue that holds these plaques together, and they're finding a way to interfere with that. It's something I think if you are working, uh, looking at Alzheimer's, looking for a clue, how to stop it for yourself, for someone that you know, maybe some that's maybe focusing you on a way to go ahead and Work that out. Work, integrate with this. Uh, figure out what they're doing, and maybe you can find whether it's a, me a chemical uh, 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 lead, uh, lead in order to help you, or simply go look for the herb that may be out there to help this problem. Now you, you're focusing on a protein. This is my main problem with uh, with gene splicing and stuff: is that it creates unintended proteins. Notwithstanding the proteins that are foreign to you, your DNA that come in that are <laughs> that are injected <laughs> into. So that, that make all these unintended consequences, which no one really wants to speak to. 
All right, so here, but Alzheimer's is, is a big problem. They've been telling us it's coming. We're, the population that I speak to and may be a part of, although I'm kind of the, the low, the, 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 the lagging, dragging foot of this group, these is the problems that we're dealing with. And to my mind, we're also the, the last vestige of the power, the numbers that we could focus on, our power and our, our knowledge and our awareness, a reoriented our brain and what we're told about, uh, we can start throwing some of this nonsense off that we've acquired through the life as they started messing with us back in the 70s and all this, whatever they're doing, whatever's happened, whatever the RFID, RF, uh, RF stuff and all that is, whatever a consequence, we can start focusing back on that. We are the last vestige of the power uh, with the witness of how to fight what the principles that have been stolen from us over the last few decades. And we're being affected, and I think maybe on purpose at some low, at some point when you see some other things, but they're also finding out these studies are uh, more, and the science is coming to prove out more what may be the cause, and we then can turn around and see if there's a natural or chemical process. Remember, I mean, when you look at vaccines, if the only choice you have is to die, maybe the vaccine is not such a bad consequence, notwithstanding it may give you cancer in 30 years. Okay, so that's the trade-off type of thing you have to start looking at, but when you have to make that decision. If you're someone of you that know about uh, this protein and understand how it's created, you can understand maybe the herbs that are out there to, con to counter the, the, the dynamic of it, then you might be able to come up with the answer for the rest of us to help uh, get people out of their Alzheimer's problems because apparently Alzheimer's is the leading cause of death somehow. It's kind of fascinating. Uh, next story, ibuprofen could eliminate Alzheimer's disease. Ibuprofen could uh, could eliminate at risk uh, at risk patients discovered via saliva test may be able to avoid dementia if they take a dose of the painkiller from the middle age for the rest of their life. Now I'm not going to promote this as the salvation. Uh, I understand that ibuprofen has some uh, very serious side effects, like all this stuff does. But when you're looking at dementia and forgetting to take your, <laughs> your forgetting what your life was like and, li and, and limit and, and ending your your capacity to be viable, maybe uh, this ibuprofen is an is a um, answer for you. I wanted just to pl put it out there because one of our abilities, you know, again we start doing things in our mind. We don't know what we're doing. We're we're our actions are constrained by however our brain is being interfered with. And we don't have a sense of that, I don't think. Oh, yeah, we know something's not quite as good as good. Boy, I'm going through some of that. But I can't remember. It seems like, a, seems like I'm forgetting short-term stuff anymore. I, I know it's because I have so much on my mind on some very big projects. But, you know, I just start to sense, oh, there's just something that's not quite as sharp as it used to be. Well, it might be because I need to start looking at this myself. I don't know. I'm not saying so. I'm not selling this. I'm not promoting this as the answer. I'm saying there's some investigation that shows that uh, this painkiller uh, may actually work uh, to help Alzheimer's. I would say be care very careful on the side effects like all this stuff. Everything needs to be looked at. So they're they're uh, they're getting a they're, they keep attacking us and then they keep diminishing us and it's up to us to it's our responsibility to be able to address both sides. Um, another thing that's coming on, you know, uh, interested to see this this story drop from one side, but it's still back up, and I just wanted to comment. Uh, again, talking to how to respond to the government and its administrative side and that you can play a part. And uh, just to say, well, it doesn't matter. Well, I think it does matter. Let me remind you, Jefferson Mining District uh, was partly created for doing something called coordination. And as an entity, as a government, congressionally recognized miners' government, it's able to engage the government at levels that uh, most normal just people can't uh, because of the way the law is. But it also can make public comments as a coordinator and we have as a district uh, in lots of areas and I can just tell you that everywhere that we've been the witness to regulations that were wrongfully promulgated or about to be we have not seen those regulations so for those of you that don't think that this works I'm telling you that it, it absolutely can work you just have to be in the game take a little bit of time a thoughtful consideration Put together a nice, concise statement. Give yourself standing. And if that's a nice, concise statement that they have to regard, I'm always amazed that they don't take the next step to promulgate the rule. So you don't even have to go to court. Now, is that going to happen all the time? Is so Absolutely not. None of this is. You may have to go to court, but be ready where you're going to be. Look at, at the remedy going down the road. So it's happening. D-A-R-E, DARE, ends anti-weed campaign. 
quietly removes pot from a gateway drug list. Pretty interesting. As those of you that are in cannabis and the DEA and all this other stuff and the, and the FDA and this, and this listing of, a, of, of it doesn't know what it's doing, it's now not a gateway drug. Here's another list to those of you that are wanting to get it back in your public comment over there, of uh, come up with a factual response. Here's another one that the, sud, silently they drop the, the pot as being a gateway drug to worse things. Now you can say that's not part of the opioid crisis that the CIA and the pharma have created, see? So it just starts to build for those of you that are in it. It's just like it started. You're on the you're 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 pushing the snowball, not being ready to be hit by it. Cannabis has been shown to kill cancer cells, save lives, countless epileptic children, treated PTSD, heal bones, treat brain trauma, and it's and there's a bunch of links here, folks. So you can those of you that are into it or want to get into this, like you would get into your bump stocks and just to jump in and say, hey, you don't have a right to infringe on what I decide I'm going to use against you, you oppressive government. Uh, but here there's a bunch of lists you can put in uh, here that you lied when you said that it doesn't do things. There's a whole list. It's got links and a slew of other uses science is only beginning to understand. So we got this. It's coming on. And all of a sudden this D.A.R.E. campaign, the War on Drugs group, decides to pull out that it is a gateway drug. It's a, kind of a big deal in a way. Oh, it's still illegal on the federal level, but we're not going to now promote that it's a gateway drug to worse things. Well, if it's not a gateway drug, then maybe it doesn't do what gateway drugs do, and maybe it's not what they've said it is, and all that. Now you open the floodgates to those of you that are interested. These are these are monumental things for people if they would just start to get engaged. I, I mean, to my mind, if I knew about a group of people, this would be like big deal stuff. One little report can be ex exploded into a whole bunch of power in a statement. And see, then the other thing is you have the education problem. You have to understand, your, and I may or may not do this so well. I don't know that I do. I get Either I'm, I'm so well understood and people don't want to do what I'm doing, so I don't get the listenership at all, or that I would uh, or did, uh, and people want to go to other people that sound like their stuff is better. Uh, or you're just not interested. I'm either an educator that educates you to the thing you, you just admit you're not going to be responsible to, or I'm not a good educator. And I go, either way, it's fine. Uh, but the, the point is there's some information here that, that even if you can't understand me, you should be able to find out for yourself if you're truly interested, if you're truly responsible. And I don't mean made up responsible. I mean truly looking at the real problems and in the, in the, what's going on and address it. I still believe with the millions and millions of us. Listen, the same reason why they didn't invade us in World War II because there was a, blade, a gun behind every blade of grass is the millions that are sitting there with a the mind and creative power to address the, the, the to turn that gun into a piece of paper for the time being to address uh, the war against us locally, the war on drugs that's lying to destroy people. And, the, and this article also shows the industries that have been, perpet, been perpetrated up and built up around this lie. And now it's not a gateway drug. Those of you that are involved just shouldn't be uh, popping corks. You should be jumping in to find this story. Find, okay, it's not a gateway drug. It has a limitation in use, but look at what the floodgate that it just opened. Look at the silent acknowledgement on the government's side. Federal funds are paying to, 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 de, to de, delist it as, as this gateway. Oh, my mind just kind of get, starts running about all the power this starts to bring you that you co concisely put together into a small statement. You turn around once you get that understood, and when you fully understand, then you can educate other people, not arguments. You just say, well, this is here. This is what this is. There's no argument. You can either agree or disagree, but there's no argument. Okay, so I'm trying to tell you there's, I'm not, I'm not, it was like, again, the chat last night I was in, I don't like fighting in the courts, folks. I don't do this to go to court. I do this all... I've, what I do is try to avoid the courts. But what if I have to go to court, i got a record that doesn't make a question. It's not an issue we bring to the court. It's the answer. And all you're doing is you're looking for the remedy. You're just looking for the, for the, for the ability, to, essentially the injunction. Stop it. That's what injunction is, to enjoin, to stop. Yes, stop. Just stop the crime. That's all that is. So here, here's the information, folks. They got it's coming down that, 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 that this oppression, the tools of oppression, can be vanquished against us. 
Not one of us can do it, but lots of us could. And that's all I come here to say every week. And all of you old, old long in the tooth guys, that, like like myself coming on here, we have a, a thought, I'm sure. There's a thought we have. We have a wisdom. We have an experience. Maybe not so good, but we have, we can we can learn from that in order to do better. And then we have the focus that I don't think lots of people have. So at one level, I'm truly encouraged, but on another, the, the every day that goes by, one of us is not going to be here. How many times, how many of our fa- friends have we now found that don't, don't chat no more because they're not around? They just disappear, gone. They were here and gone. So we don't, there's no, no time that, that we can use to wait. No time what like today. Notwithstanding the, the devil and the procrastination that wants to come up and wants you to do that. Yes, I like to do that, and I have to fight that all the time. But I give myself reasons to keep moving forward and uh, focusing on uh, taking this thing that uh, they handed us and, and using it against them. And that just self-evident means you're not you're in a prison anyway. So what are you going to do? You're going to just gonna let them have your way with you? I guess you could. So these regulatory things come along. We have really we have abilities to jump in. You have to understand the subject matter. You have to understand where the regulators are. Notwithstanding the, the conflict of interest with with the bottom line, all that I talk about, you have to understand all that. And you do if you listen to Behind the Woodshed, right? You, you do. You know all about that problem. So you just set it up. You just work that through. Again, because I believe we know that problem with Jefferson Money District comments and things like that. We understand you have to look at what the, how they're going to decide something, and you have to address how they're going to decide it. And you pretty well knock their knees out from under it, take their feet out from underneath it, before it even gets started. They don't even, they don't even try. And so, what all the government says is no good, now we start seeing it pull back, we see an adjustment. Uh, to me, this is all just power. On the other hand, you see the government coming in with this uh, conflict of interest, and they just start letting things come on us. Remember, all this stuff that comes on us has been okayed by a government for profit. And I tell you, under Title 50, that's their license to do so if they want to. You saw them do it right up with vaccines and the immunity, uh, the, the, the vaccine court. That was a, a big clue I don't think people appreciate. Uh, but something a real big big problem came up, I think, for us uh, uh, that uh, with the regulation that I, I, you know, everyone should be involved in this one. And this is back to those proteins that we find out are so important that cause us harm. Uh, that I tell you, in these uh, new technologies are creating unintended proteins, unintended consequences in materials within what they make. That I don't think is um, is had a big enough voice and enough certainly not enough people talking about it. Uh, people seem to talk about the wrong things. I don't know where that comes from. Maybe that's a psyop as well. But uh, there's ways to talk on point about this. Uh, and you just have to get inside and see how this works. But CRISPR plants won't be regulated. These CRISPR plants, we talked about this Cas9 stuff. Where they think they can surgically interject certain certain things to change organisms. They're not going to be considered to be genetically modified. If you get, if you understand that, then you understand how, how uh, sieve-like uh, the, all this regulation stuff is. So you have to come, you have to match that sieve with your own cover. You have to be able to be more watertight than that uh, with your discussion. But in a big win for biotech industry, the United States Department of Agriculture says it won't regulate plants whose genome have been altered using gene editing technology. That should cause some great alarm. I won't read more. You can go read the story when you get the list uh, to the link in the blogcaster if you want to. But uh, John Rappaport comes right back up and responses to this, and I think it's important to look at this, because again, for those of you that are interested to make comments, or to get engaged, or to force a comment, remember like that comp- that uh, group did with the fluoride, they went after the toxic law, the toxic uh, uh, provision law, and they were able to open up the matter when the when the agency didn't look at it. So look look for those things in, in the codes as well, but uh, John Rapport comes out to talk, firefight breaks out over gene editing dangers. And in his story, again, he he comes up with a lot of stuff for you uh, about how the problem is the mutations. And he shows you all the reports if you're interested. This is not a small problem. This is a big problem. My main main first question was these these proteins that the cell, not under CRISPR technology, but there's no difference here. It ends up doing the same thing with the origination, uh, the original gene uh, gene modification. That the cell is a natural thing. 
You may not think it's alive. It's a natural life. It, it has a defense mechanism, and that's what it does when you in, invade it with a needle and put some stuff in it. It creates all these other things that are out there. It defends itself by re-zipping re its own uh, epigenetically. It starts to defend itself. Re-engineering its own DNA. Just fascinating. Just amazing. And we're messing with that. And so I want, I want to put the show that, again, for those of you who want to be interested, not disinterested, he brings up a lot of things that you can point out. I want to point out the main thing is that this CRISPR being handed carte blanche acceptance comes with the same problems and worse because it also shows not that the there's unintended uh, combinations of genes that go on. There's this uh, this process where it subtracts or adds in ways they don't know. And I don't know, you know, we don't type type to have time. I mean, we don't take time to necessarily to appreciate that these these simply could be adjusting how we think. And then we don't know what we're thinking or how we're thinking. We're di we're changed. We don't know. Now that, that's if you don't believe a plant sentient that it wouldn't extend, would it? So, but for us, it changes us. Well, what about a plant's processes? And then what if they are sentient? What if it is the big ohm, the big one? Well, what are we doing unintendedly that we aren't looking and actually applying how the uh, the Principle for not, uh, you know, the, I can't think of the word. It's where you don't hurt anything. I don't know why that doesn't. That, that's like a new age statement. I don't like even talking to it. But anyway, it's the uh, it's a principle that you don't you, you look very carefully before you're going to really look at at hurting something. The precautionary principle is what the Agenda 21 says. So that is, that's attached with a whole bunch of stuff. But anyway, so why aren't we doing that with our our uh, food uh, our food stuffs our plant stuffs? Now, now, maybe gene therapies may not be, we don't care when we're dealing with things that uh, the plant won't necessarily, in process, won't won't pass through. But we're not talking about, we're talking about things that we will be consuming or our animals are, are, are be consuming. And we find out, like, the spongiform problem with the mad cow disease, it moves from uh, from beast to beast. It'll uh, move from you what, what chicken pox came to people. Come on. So we see these translations going through. When we now we have all the evidence before they allowed the CRISPR gene editing, uh, we, there's already been record that there's mutations and problems with, the, with combinations, additive differences, and all this other stuff. Anyway, so enough there. If you're interested, you are. If not, I don't know. This is sitting there for us to take on, for those of you that are interested. And I think John's a good, good source. Uh, to start with, at least get you on the path real quick, like I would try to do uh, in the, that subject matter area, at least to show you some of the documents and say, hey, well, you, know, you just can't look at these documents and not say, what the heck are they doing? What the heck are you doing is a good question. Only thing you bring up your, your objection, what the heck are you doing, becomes a proof with all this documentation in a comment. And you would then have standing, when they didn't fully weigh the consideration of that, you have standing to enjoin it until they do. Right? This is not that hard. I've been trying to explain, for all I talk, this stuff is not that hard. What's hard is to get engaged and taking responsibility to go do it. So there, the science is out there so-called. They do all this stuff. They don't check out. There's no precautionary principle. They they get you, they do technologies that change you without your, your consent, if you will. But it is with your consent because you keep... Doing what Silent Weapon Quiet War says, you're going to plug yourself into all those nice toys they hand us. And I'm not immune if it wasn't for a technology. And uh, I would not be talking to you today. So we're all part of that part too. But scientists say RFID chips will not be optional. They will change the very essence of what it is to be human. Okay, you're not a man no more. The future does not look at men or women. You're human, you're an animal, and uh, the RFID chip, you know, we talk about it being the hand, uh, the numbers, you're n uh, being able to be read at a distance, your identity in the palm of your hand. We have Palm we have Palm Friday or something at some point here, didn't we? Palm Sunday, what, what Palm Day? The other face palm, what? RFID, what is it doing, folks? It's responding to frequencies. It means you're going to be in an environment fully frequentized. And all these frequencies are adjusting you as well. 
And then we talk about binary weapons, biological binary weapons as well. But they're saying this is not going to be avoidable. I think this is a notice to you that you're going to have to work to the future so that it's avoidable for your progeny. To this scientist, this scientist's authority, he's going to be authority if you, if you remain crickets. The technology advances things are becoming more and more intense and unique in every aspect of the word. Microchips for humans are things we have heard quite a lot about in the past few years and with good reason. While the thought of being implanted with the microchip sounds painful, it apparently isn't. Like that's going to help us. Basically, it involves using a hypodermic needle to inject an RFID chip, microchip about the size of a grain of rice and uh, into a person's hand or wrist. This uh, chip, these chips can uh, then be used to lock and unlock home, cars, and other things of the sort. It is uh, something that everyone is either excited about or completely against. There isn't, in, uh, isn't much in between. Well, they only point about uh, using it for your advantage. They don't talk about it as being an ID. They don't talk about it in the context of big data, in registration, control, if you don't have a phone, you can't use a Minds Reward account. Because we need to use that phone uh, to keep people from making lots and lots of accounts to, to, to uh, take advantage of the reward system. So those of you who don't have a phone, you're a second-class citizen. This is how this works. It's that simple. They, got, they want you on your phone. Now, I'm not uh, alleging that Minds.com people are in the deep state. But I can't tell you they're not. Who was it that came up with that kind of a thing where you're going to be, have to step into the very thing that the people at Minds.com would probably say they didn't want to step into, that they're going to be required to continue if they're going to flourish on that system, is what you're seeing everywhere. Do you think that the, I told you that the phone is just going to be the accessory. It's going to turn down to this thing, this credit card in your back of your pocket. They're going to have all the same technology as, as technology gets smaller. They get us focused on this RFID microchip again. It comes up again, folks, like we haven't heard about it before. They're pushing it again. It won't come by the RFID. It's already in your phone. And those frequencies are hurting you. And they are well, the whole point about it is not what you can do, it's what they're doing with what you think they've given you to do. And we crickets on all of this and it's gonna harm you. You're gonna be some kind of a mutated cricket. I don't even know what you're gonna turn into. And what do they do with this RFID data collection, storing all these things that they're doing? Uh, but you're finding it out that now it's just coming out and they're sticking it in your face. A Facebook Data has a zip file and has my entire call history with my partner's mum. Deep data, silent webs of quiet wars. I've mentioned this. Well, it came out again. Another story now, more clear. Facebook scraped call text messages from the Android phones. If you're not, you know, understanding what they're doing when you put these apps in into play, you do that. When you uh, take on all of this uh, gift, this gifting, these free programs by these big data companies. All just sucking information to do things that I told you, I've told you before. It doesn't matter that you're not doing anything wrong. Somebody could fabricate that you're doing something wrong. You tick somebody off in the wrong way, and you just might find yourself in a lot of trouble. What do you think is going on behind the scenes in the government? Do you think any of those people don't have something on them that they're going to toe the line? See, it's not what you don't, it's not what you see, it's what you don't see that's the problem. You're finding out that the SCL group uh, utilizes this information was underneath this other company that was data mining for the for the uh, uh, election what was uh, is does it for psychosocial research psychosocial research they're figuring out your brain how you respond that you they figured out that you can be dupable and how you get that your senses don't mean much to you if you don't understand the 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 limitations what i was talking about earlier at the broadcast if you're going to get into this stuff uh, truly understand the battlefield truly understand your vulnerabilities and start to look to fortify up where they might be vulnerable if you are and this digital realm is completely vulnerable and so go ahead and put all your eggs in that basket. But I'm going to tell you up front already, it's not a good future. 
And that's where they want to get you they, to go. They don't want you to have a good future. They are figuring you out. Here's the proof. Now, a couple of weeks ago now, I can't get to all the news I have. I'm really getting frustrated about that. It's so, coming so quickly, I can't tie all this together uh, sufficiently. Uh, but th this is, again, one of the rings of the uh, Agenda 21 is a social. It's behavioral. It's figuring you out. This is one of the companies going behind Facebook. Okay? So it, they're telling you this is what they're doing to it. If we didn't even need to, to know more, it's all coming out more and more what's going on. How much information? I'm just, I don't know if it meant anything, but, I mean, and it's not like I don't have a, a digital footprint, but I am just so glad I never bought into Google. I mean, to participate in, hard, I have in hardly anything they do. Yes, I got YouTube. I'm, yeah, YouTube. But even that, I got it blocked down. I can barely even see a video sometimes. But I don't, I didn't get into Google Plus, none of that stuff. Why? Because they're collecting all that data and it lasts forever and they're using it behind the scenes. And you don't even know how. And that's the other thing. You don't even know how. What they're doing is they're construct, reconstructing your future. You don't see that. You won't even know how it's affecting you, this stuff. Uh, the timely video about dark patterns, quote, dark patterns, the tricks websites use to manipulate you. And this is really just an example of how the government or the companies, yeah, government, they're all, comp they're all government, they're how the companies uh, get you involved and don't allow you to ne negate, to stop, to get undone, uh, to delete what you were going to do. How they get you to click on things because of your perception. You get used to the, the little monkey and you get used to, like they'll tell you, they'll show you a video, how you get used to clicking on a color. And then when you go to a different level or you ask for a different thing, the color pattern changes. And now the color that you weren't, we're clicking that you got plan it, just, it only takes a few times to do it just a couple of times you click the same color three or four times when you get to the new level the the color of the button that you're going to click now asks you to go buy something and you just absent-mindedly click it without looking and they make your selection so that you the one you're supposed to select is select is so small you're not going to you have to really look closely at your screen before you can find what you need to do they bury stuff uh, they'll bury everything that you want to do that is counter to their interest is gone. It's buried. They'll show you all about how this is called dark patterns. It's not unknown. The point is that people out there that are exploiting you, they know you, they know your, your physiognomy, you know how you're going to respond, they know your psychology, psychosocial, they know how you're going to respond, how you're not going to respond. They can predict it. They can say they can predict it. It's probably the scariest bit of it. So are you ready? Here is all the data Facebook and Google have on you. There's an article. They can show you all the stuff you've ever done. Ever. Ever. And by these dark patterns, they have third parties that have gone in. You've clicked and given them permission to scour everything else you did, all your emails, whatever. Oh, you know, oh well, I don't care. I, I, I think you need to rethink about you don't care. Do you have no responsibility to yourself? You have actually no scruple in you that says that that's not cool? That you would let someone abuse you like that and that's okay? I would really have a problem with that myself. About you. Who, are you are you really abused that bad? That you'll continue the abuse. And this is what they've done for us and this is what they've done to us. We'd rather excuse it because it's easier not to mess with it. And part of my observation was, if I could get, and this is what the part of the, the, the Jefferson Mining District, if I can get miners to understand there's a formal process and get them used to that, then it won't be so foreign when we really have to get into the battle. We're at least geared up a bit. We practiced a little bit. We know how to communicate better. We don't go and do the long-winded, long, nonsense discussion. We don't interject what we think we know up over and on top of a system that won't listen to it. We learn to run and we learn how to do the battle the way the battle needs to be fought. So there's an, now it's coming out, folks. If you ever thought that this was a question or you, you thought you knew, great. Well, here's the proof. These companies are just pulling this information down. Uh, and they, uh, my problem with it is that they use it against you. They track you down. They make stuff up. They get in your face. They, they get, listen, how frustrating is it to have to go five places in order to try and do one thing? Should tell you something. And you're willing to go do that, or you won't do it at all. And what does that do? If it's counter to their interest and you fin don't finish it, then they win. They win that too. And we're so unavailable to what 
we can be trained to do. As I said, you know that little rat experiment. The human was got the tail, the rat, uh, of the tail of the rat to move. And I said, no, that was the rat telling the human, only move my tail. I don't want to be embarrassed in this uh, in this experiment. Inducing task relevant responses to speech in the sleeping brain. Here's the highlights. Subjects classify as spoken words. Continue performing the task after falling asleep. If you don't, don't think you're programmable. The movement-related brain activity in the absence of overt behavior is demonstrated. The sleeping brain can process spoken words in a task-dependent manner. Response preparation is slower in sleep than in wakefulness. So when they get you into your REM state while you're looking at your TV screen or that little concentrated e vial, they can make suggestions and you'll perform them. I want you to think about that if you hadn't thought about it that way. But this is what they're coming down, psychosocial. They're figuring out how to get you to do things and you're not even aware of it. It's underneath your perception. These things, I don't know, you can't tell you how, I mean, I've been talking about it for years and they're just telling that's exactly what they're doing to you. And I don't hear much of any resistance to much of any of it. I want you to know about it. Part of the answer to this whole thing on all these levels is your knowledge and knowledge that it's happening that can counter it. It's not just that you know about it. You have to be able to perceive it's working against you at the time. And this is the, this is the, the, the one of the clues. This is how I tell you the language can be the predictor on some of this. I'm not talking about the technological dark patterns. Uh, those are kind of, you can kind of find those too, but I'm talking about when people start using certain phraseology, terminology, you, they and you can anticipate where that's going. You start to understand that technique, and that gives you the power to stop it. doesn't mean you can at the moment, but you at least identify it. Otherwise, it's transparent to you. When I talk about that transparency, that's what this is all about. You're, they are figuring you out figure out how you respond to stuff. They know your brain better than you do. You didn't even know your brain did that, and they got you doing it. So much so that this next story was uh, kind of terrifying in a way, and I'm thinking about little ones. And uh, maybe even on our own, we're looking at movies and things, and got, as a little one, got shocked. In our, you know, The movie scene that never left our mind for 70 years <laughs> after, 60, 50 years, uh, because it just shocked our little conscience to, to, to no end. We became avert to that. Here's a thing, another thing I was pointing out, uh, wanting to point out, uh, how virtual reality safety training can trick the mind. Think about that. How virtual reality safety training can trick your mind with all of this virtual reality coming on the scene. And remember, the, the big, the big mucky mucks in these data companies who are bailing out of them, uh, who are support group are saying, no, it's like crossing the red lines now, what they're doing. We knew it could do this, and we were we were avoiding it, but I'm bailing, so they're doing it. They're doing it, not because I'm bailing, but they're doing it, and I can't stand that, the, that we're doing it. In fact, my kids don't don't have a palm. My fa they don't have a slate. They don't have none of that stuff. My kids, because this stuff is so dangerous. Well, virtual reality safety training can trick the mind. It makes it sound like it's a good thing. But, well, this safety training is really you're seeing a virtual reality. They, they, wrap your, they wrap your whole awareness. It's your eyes. Your thought, your response, your balance, your hearing. That's all they need to, that's all they really need is your sight and your hearing. And they immerse you in this environment. And they've found that they can show you things that you will be averse to in the future. I want you to look, think about that in your TVs uh, and your little ones and all these immersive type things that are coming on, coming on as well, making it even more immersive, that they can feed you information, that it will make you averse to some condition. How about making you averse to respond to stop authorita? What if they are applying this, and they do apply it, and you watch it on your TV, but now they do it even more with virtual reality as a training, as a school now, it's a function of your school, they shock your your mother your 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 your, um, your mother's uh, send your kids to the to the to the school and part of the game is a virtual reality game where in that game they're shocking your little ones to be averse to certain things that the behavioral control social engineers want them to not uh, contend with uh, uh, be contentious to uh, contending with in the future. 
is this article here. They talk about it, uh, safety training. Well, what if the safety training is the government training you out of being resistive? Because it's safety training for them. Remember, I don't go too far from the idea that this is a occup military occupation and they secure themselves. How virtual reality safety training can trick the mind. And you wonder why they're going to virtual reality in immersion technologies. Is this getting too creepy for you? Why I say these things are just concentrated evil. The, the good hats didn't get their hat on in time, didn't get on their horse, and, and then protect the rest of it. And I don't know that they can now. And so if you're not aware this can happen, you won't realize if they can do this in virtual reality, they've been doing it to you in your TV. Do you, do you kind of get that already? For decades this has been going on. Just like they told us. Just like they told us. And so they put in your, they got hack in your systems, you put the programs in, they've been giving you virtual reality training, they've been giving you aversion therapy, they're socially controlling you, they're behaviorally controlling you, you don't even know it. You're getting these amyloid plaques all over your mind uh, as they program you with it probably as well, and if not, then it acts like an amyloid plaque. And you're work, they're working you into a dementia. And you're going to sit there drooling on yourself and not, com, uh, not conflict with uh, authorita. And we talked about bump stocks. And that's the start of it. They just watch the amyloid plaque starting to come on, on the body politic. The parasite. The NASA worked to track down, the NSA, I would say NASA, the NSA worked to track down Bitcoin users, Snowden documents reveal. So they get you immersed in these, these games, and they get you into these programming situations, and they programmed them. It's not something new, but now it's coming out some more. My problem was on this story, it came from The Intercept. This was the Snowden documents. So, the, so I was telling you, be careful of the, of the Bitcoin. It's not the end-all, be-all. It was the thing they start to get everybody immersed in and do the uh, bio, behavioral controls on. And they made it exciting, and you start pulling into it. Okay, Interesting, great technology, but I think it still needs to be privatized. It needs to be privatized and kept private. And ways to keep people out have to be made and still allow access. It's a pretty, div pretty difficult conundrum. Like I said, the best thing that came to mind this morning was sandboxing each account, a transaction within a blockchain. So it's on a ledger, but it's not accessible by everybody, only the people that are party to it. Maybe that's maybe part of Ethereum too. But you know, also the game is the Bitcoin's taking a big dive, Ethereum's taking a big dive. This is the game they get you into. But the NSA has tracked down Bitcoin users. You saw it was anonymous. Well, no, proving it's not. But my problem with this whole thing about the Intercept is they knew this. The Intercept got this on the Snowden documents in, I think, 2013, they say. And my question to about, about all this thing is, uh, turns out that they can do that? And my question is, did the Intercept publicize this from the Snowden docs prior? No, they didn't. They held on. The, the Intercept held on to this. This is kind of like the Tor browser. Well, we know there's a problem in there, but we're not going to let it on to the public until the NSA has a chance to get it uh, exploited a bit. So now we know also that the NSA is involved, and this has to do with national security. So how do, again, we're bringing up the idea that you're all a, an enemy combatant, you're deemed to be an enemy combatant. This is everything you do is a national security interest, and they're going to secure themselves until the point that they're going to program, allow you to program your computers and provide virtual reality to sh of, uh, shock you into being adverse to confront the very crimes and oppression that's being put on you. Really fascinating psychological dynamic going on, and we're doing it to ourselves. Did the Intercept hold this back since 2013? Well, they had to, folks. So who are they working for? Now, you know I didn't get a response on that tweet. I, I, I'd certainly like an answer one way or the other. Well, they holding back all this documentation for, and it's, and it's this critical that to those of you in Bitcoin are being tracked. Do you think that's the only one? I doubt it. And I told you this is, this blockchain technology is controlled by whoever creates it and you buy into it. That's the author. You will be conditioned by his rule, or her rule, for those female programmers out there that will feel insulted. I don't mean to do that. In fact, some of the women uh, coders are probably, I've seen them pretty much better than some of the guys I know. So where are you to help protect all this and call this stuff out? I don't know. 
This is what our problem is. We don't know the battlefield either. We always have to hold out that we don't know the battlefield. It's been made for you. You think The Matrix is not a movie. That was the, that's the telling of the tale. You walk yourself into an environment that was set up for you to go. That's the small silent weapons for quiet, quiet wars by definition and a, a publication that's willing to hold that, withhold that information uh, until some later date. And I want to know why. I want to know when did they, why did they do it that way? And it's a rhetorical question. I kind of know why, right? You kind of know why. Why wouldn't they put it for unless they're working with them? And if they're not, why aren't they talking about that either? See, it, it just a shameful condition all the way around. Uh, you, you, you see the NSAs involved in the United States government has their fingers everywhere. You, you talk about the blockchain uh, not being, um, uh, you know, being somewhat uh, protective a bit or anonymous and this and that. We've been left and right. And I've told you that they're going to lock down all this stuff. The government, it's the government system that you're working on the interwebs. This is the biggest uh, honeypot I've ever seen in my life. Uh, this is the, l the biggest limited hangout in all of mankind is this interwebs, the Internet. And uh, you think that you can be anonymous for whatever you think you can do. Uh, you think the NSA has got it, its fingers in, in and it can't be controlled. If you don't have controls of the switches, you got no no control. So wherever all this is going, you're going to be subject to whoever has the power to stop the main switches or to have access to them. So not only if you don't think this is not a global problem, that all the governments are looking at this and utilizing it for what it is, the FSB is to give Internet messengers 10 days to hand over their encryption keys. Russia now shows that they're willing to come in and stomp on any encryption issues. Russia's Federal Security Service, FSB, has ordered data exchange services such as Internet messengers to give up the encryption keys for their clients' correspondence within 10 days of receiving an of official request. Well, folks, we just heard that they keep those things forever. If you want a zip file of what Facebook has, well, you can go ahead. I know Twitter, you can go, I guess, get your whole, uh, your whole uh, data sheet, database downloaded of what you've done all uh, your whole time. It just sits there. If it, that happens to be an encrypted condition, Maybe even each HTTPS encryption, they can break it by the order of the uh, by the order of a government. So we can talk about the fact that it's it's got it's encrypted, but at the point that there's a way to break the encryption or get into the encryption part of those databases, they, the the companies can be ordered by the government to do so, and they'll turn it over. I mean, this is not even not even hard to figure out. Uh, so do you think that the FSB is the only one, Russia is the only one doing it? No. The, the new back door around the Fourth Amendment, the Cloud Act, C-L-O-U-D Act. There's a new proposed uh, proposed back door to our data which would bypass our Fourth Amendment protections of, to communication privacy. Well, most of that really isn't private because it's a public device, isn't it? So be careful on what people tell themselves about these stories. You really have to get into the subject matter Certainly a whole lot more than I can't even begin uh, behind the woodshed or even for myself. I mean, this is really almost beyond what I can keep up with, so it's just a matter of, at this point, just limiting my exposure. It's partly why uh, I will, not, well, I don't have a phone to get the mine's account uh, hash, but uh, but that would be, see, buying into all that too. So I'm not going to be, the, my future is kind of limited in, in this digital world. And yours, in a way, should be too. But there's an, I know there's an alternative. I can see almost see an alternative. It's, people are going to have to come together to figure that out. Because what they're doing is something called the Cloud Act. They're going to ask for the, for the back door. If they don't already have it is the other joke here. But it's now going to be in the law that they're going to go through what? The cloud. It's exactly what that cloud so-called was set up for. For I have a man in the cloud too. But the, it is uh, built on a dangerous bill called the Cloud Act, which would allow the police at home and abroad... A home and abroad, there's no borders, folks, to seize cross-border data without following the privacy rules where the data is stored. What's a border? I don't know. There's a jurisdiction in every county in the United States of America. You tell me. The back door is an insidious method uh, for accessing our emails, our chat logs, our online videos and photos, and our private moments shared online between one another. This back door would deny us meaningful judicial review and the privacy protections embedded in the, our Constitution. Okay, well, that must means it must not be working. Okay, so new reality. Fed's pushing a new plan. If that wasn't good or bad enough, Fed's pushing a new plan. The encrypted mobile device unlocks uh, for them, but not you. 
They want their back door, and now the agencies are looking at it. Uh, the companies are saying weakening security makes no sense, but they're not they're not into sense. They're into security for the system. So be careful on anybody who's stepping up and using a false uh, false front for an argument. The De Department of Justice is pushing for a new indus industry proposal that would grant law enforcement access to encrypted digital devices with a warrant. And we've seen how that works out. Just want to let you know, this is the battlefield. They're turning it up, folks. This is all coming down. There's not a voice to counter it. And when there is a voice, it's not listened to. Why? Because this was the honeypot uh, that, uh, of all time. This was the limited hangout, the Internet. And until some of these uh, easier ways to go through the so-called dark web, and on closed close systems that work in that system, I think we're going to have a little bit of trouble. And I'm certainly not the one that's going to solve that. I don't have a, a clue on how that. I just have a vague idea on how this works. I've seen things that go out there, but it's beyond it's beyond us uh, at this point. And so I'm not saying don't do it. I'm saying if you engage, understand. Know what you're dealing with. As I've told you, one of the things, okay, so I use a Tor browser. What does that mean? Well, it means I intended to be private, which now requires they do have to show a warrant which may be spacious in a way, but they do have to show that. And that gives me another in angle. I'm, not, I'm, I'm not, not a guy that does anything, but just in case they make stuff up, folks, and I'll show you that if I get there, that they make stuff up. I mean, it's on and on. They can make stuff up. I told you it was coming, and here it is. But I have the ability to say then, no, I made that in, I, wanted that, I intended that private. You have to show the warrant, and how did you understand to get the warrant on that account if it was, it was encrypted? that it would contain the information you're after. And so you have another word in your mouth. You have a fallback position, even in face of an overwhelming odds. Okay, how many times have I heard fighting, firefights go on, and there's only a few people being attacked by massive numbers of people, and they still aren't overtaken? I don't know what to tell you about, again, this endless optimism I seem to have in us to be able to figure our own problems out and Stop listening if we can get past the amyloid plaque problem in our brain that our virtual reality that we call the Internet is putting upon us. We get beyond that, I think we have a chance, folks. Maybe I, maybe I haven't given up. I, I don't know. I've got no, no capacity to fix it, but I haven't given up for us. So they want their back door. If the Cloud Act isn't enough, if FSB saying that we're just going to order them to open it anyway isn't enough, and then this little twist came off with your blockchain. I hadn't even thought about this. It's kind of funny what it takes to kind of straighten you up, what what cruelty is really in the world. For those of you that are in the blockchain, have you thought about your liability to, and then because it is a centralized chain, uh, that people are stashing irrevocable child porn links, docs, copyright infringement, and leaked state secrets in the blockchain that you would have possession of and could be held accountable for. Did you know that, folks? No, that came as a shocker, actually. What do people, I didn't even know people did that stuff. See, I think it's all legitimate, but it's not. It's, it can be used for some terrible things. And guess what? The NSA can already inject this stuff. So if they want you, you don't have to be doing anything wrong. They'll find you doing wrong. This is how this works. Uh, this is not to be trifled with is a some non-responsive answer. No, you may not be someone thereafter, but what happens when you are someone? You, you decide to move forward in a county, that, oh, there's a wrong going on, and it's a little more integrated in that county, and they have the people that come after you. Maybe one day your blockchain has this put on it. I, I was really kind of shocked about this. It kind of come at me from left field. People actually would do this, and then I know the government would. Someone in the government even, just some little creech critter, some creep inside is, I'm going to go after them, and has the tools to do it, which the NSA put out for everybody, right? So they could hide their tracks. You see how that works. So if all that vulnerability isn't enough, we have now this story. Uh, Under Armour admits 100 million, 150 million users affected by data security breach. A, a, a product called Under Armour. Oh, no, it's Under Civ or something. It's not Armour. They've got to change their name on this one. You rely on these things, these softwares, these digital coded things, and they can be, again, given up your information. And this is to the, essentially to the hackers because the NSA's got it, the government's got it, the companies have got it, Microsoft's got it, Apple's got it. They all got it, folks. 
and you say, oh, well, I don't, I don't do anything wrong. I'm telling you, you just heard a report that said someone can inject a blockchain into your computer and give you that stuff. And guess what? You don't have access to it. They do. Talk about a surprise. Okay? I mean, I don't want to, maybe, you know, maybe I do have a vast imagination on this, but I don't think so, folks. They're telling us. It's all, I haven't been really wrong in how they put this together this way. And it just, all this stuff this week came on the digital, the digital demise, if, if you will, if you're not paying attention. If you're not paying, even if you are, even if you are, I guess is my thing. I'm looking at it, but I, what am I going to really do to stop this nonsense? Well, I don't get under armor. I used to make armor, folks. I mean, d medieval safety equipment. Okay, so I know about over-armor. And I knew the consequences of having a, a, a bad piece of armor, so we try not to do that at all. I don't think we ever had a failure. I don't think we had a data breach in, our, in the armor I made. Okay, so this is a, also a different mentality. And there's really not a mentality to protect you. It's protecting the system. It's all broken. And we still, and the problem is we still need it. All right? I'm just saying it's there. Be aware, folks. I'm not saying don't use the technology. Understand what it's doing and start to work with people in order to fix those vulnerabilities. I have a, I think it might be okay. You just don't rely on these other people. And so we had blockchain, the technology, it's just a big ledger of where you were, what you did it, all this stuff they tie together. They can even throw porn or whatever they want to do on your blockchain. You get involved. And you're now doing something wrong. You didn't even know what's going on. And, it's, and, the, and so it's vulnerable, and the governments know this. And this is another interesting story that pops up. Even the world's most cashless nation doesn't want to go fully cashless. So there's some realities about this digital world. And what's interesting here is an interesting observation that we, I read it behind the woodshed. I pointed it out, uh, but it pointed out the problem with this digital world, this virtual reality, this tool of social behavioral controls. Even if the world's most cashless nation doesn't want to go cashless because there is no way to stop any kind of a catastrophe where cash is still going to be required. And the biggest lesson was where? Puerto Rico. The Fed had to send plane loads of cash so people could actually continue doing their daily routine. I would ask you, that tells you a thing. That's a reality thing. Don't put your eggs in all in one basket and don't rely unaccountably on the digital realm. And I see what I see something in here in one of the chats. Uh, don't be a block, don't use blockchain, uh, a big chicken. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying be aware of the vulnerability. Right now, it's in the, it's in the wild west. There's not going to be an issue. And you can move around, and all you guys are playing with it. But the problem is, it's a, it's actually from a, a very small few of you that are doing that. It seems, and without conscience of the overriding use that the government's putting on this that when the rest of the people show up, they're going to be oblivious to it. And I, I'm wanting to say, if you're going to get involved with this, be really sure you understand what's happening. The writing's on the wall on all of this. It, it can be taken from you. To me, watching the Fed drop bunny uh, cash, because there was no electricity, folks, in Puerto Rico, was also the reminder, instead of using the cash, which is fiat, uh, and a valueless paper until it, it became valuable. See, they didn't have anything else. All of a sudden, that became really valuable, didn't it? Is maybe you start running back into the uh, silver and, and gold coin. I mean, just have the substance there. Don't put your eggs in one basket. Don't rely on any of this stuff. Actually, start slowing down on how much you are bringing this on you. If uh, let's say for minds.com, I can't get if I'm not going to be able to interact with that, I, I, I don't. I'm not going to be on that on that forum. It'll be, I'll be gone. So it, it just it's just going to be what's going to be the future. Now I'm not saying I am. I'm saying if that's the way it works, I don't have time for messing around with that or any of these other ones. As soon as they become too much trouble, and, and that's a pretending a future where you're going to have to start knowing more specificity. It's kind of leading into the privatization thing. You're just going to have to know where all this stuff is on the on the internet if you want to see it anymore. Because the public side of it's going to be all controlled, uh, controllable or injectable. 
Again, injecting you just like they're doing with the vaccines, like they do with the CRISPR, like they do with it, surgically implanting things and changing your, um, changing your behavior. And another thing in the real, real world fiction, <laughs> Uh, the fiat, in unprecedented move, China plans to pay for oil imports with yuan instead of dollars. We now find the yuan, petrodollar, petro yuan, uh, now stepping in, as I we reported here behind which it, uh, years ago, now they're moving it in. Now, there's an interesting dynamic in economics, and I'm not an economic guy, just the basics of that I understand. Uh, this is not not going to be like throwing the whole thing on its head, because now China has this petro yuan. It starts a whole dynamic of problems for them as well, and they really have to watch out for this. But the thing is, that the the main the government, the gov global banks aren't too concerned about it. And so this is where I tell you, this is all part of a plan. Okay, this is all integrated. But you also see the pro, pro the, the threat, like with Russia and China and the United States, like they did when uh, Libya wanted to make its own dollar. You see the war threats now focusing on Russia and China as they're attempting to move things more privatized. See, you see, that's the problem. I keep telling you, you got to privatize all this stuff, and that's going to be your problem. But that's going to be your what you're going to have to do. And if, the only way you're going to be able to protect it, uh, to, to continue to do it, is if you can protect it. And so you have to work the work the chess game out a little ways. So the, there's going to be a petro, uh, I mean a petro want you on. In China, it's going to build their remimbi. They have a deal dynamic. What happens? It sounds to me in this, and we read. I read this to you a long time ago. What starts to happen? It starts to put pressure on the United States a bit. What'll happen is it'll raise interest rates. It's just giving a place for the Fed to start raising interest rates because they got nowhere to go here, folks. And when they start raising interest rates, I want to put those of you that were alive then back into the 80s and understand what happened to that problem. It gets expensive, folks. And you can't do much because there's no there's no loan money. It's going to get a lot more di more expensive and more difficult. So look to that potential. Uh, the way you stop that again was having again the silver and gold money as a hedge, if I can call that. And so start looking at the dynamic of the world so that you stay ahead of the game. Now, in some regard, I don't have anything, so I'm not really worried about it. But for those of you that are like at retirement and all this other thing, or have money here and there and every, whatever you got, look how the dynamic plays out. Don't get all white, weirded out that things are happening, but understand there seems to be a control that's okay with all this. Also understand that they're not the government's not completely going to go cashless. They're only going to go cashless for you. Where are they going to keep this data? This Your financial, I told you, this, your financial life is going to be on the blockchain. Your property is going to be on the blockchain. And they're going to control that blockchain, just like we heard in, in in Chicago and Texas, folks. It's right there for us. Don't. I'm just trying to tie all these things together. This they all came together again. I wanted to remind us all this. Uh, this. It just occurred to me. This is the biggest. Again, the giant honeypot. We're just asked to jump in, and we are. I don't know why that is. It's, you know, big limited hangout. The, the rug can be pulled. Your life is not not so certain when before it was when you dealt in really with people. You can be infiltrated. You can do all kinds of stuff. The government has access to all this digital realm. They can they have the tools are there for them to use at advantage and not you. All this is indicative of of, of things I've talked about that are not so nice to know to think about. But, but it's in front of our face the whole time. Appeals court has no problem with cops using E911 services, E911 services to perform warrantless real-time tracking. These little pieces of concentrated e you call phones, folks. The Fifth Circuit court of, Appeal, uh, court of Court says it's fine if the government uses mandated emergency services to perform real-time GPS tracking. It doesn't go so far as to affirm the constitutionality of the action, but it achieves the same ends by voting down the appellant's request for a rehearing. I'll let you read it, but let me point out to you, E911 is the United Nations imposition for international emergency services. It's an enhancement. And every time I talk about it, I haven't used the word enhanced for a long time. Enhanced is a, not a good thing, like modernizing. None of that law is any good. It's for the system. It's for the glove. It's for the governance. Okay. And now you see they can actually do it for real time tracking. Well, what what did how are they doing that? Well, they're doing it through your GPS, through your tracking, through your phones. Well, what about all those phones? Those smart phones, not so intelligent, just smart. Part of the technocrats' 
uh, uh, vision for you. What's in those? What are they tracking? What are they getting? Well, I think I picked this up off of Twitter through Jules' account uh, uh, for UCY, all the sensors in your smartphone and how they work. And I think I, I read, sent back a Twitter saying, uh, know, thy en know thine enemy. Your smartphone is a remarkable feat of engineering. And, folks, it is. It's, that's fantastic. It's half a dozen or more gadgets packed into a single slab. And hopefully you haven't slabbed yours and it still somewhat works if you need it, although you know you're vulnerable. But much of its uh, coolest features are accomplished with a wide range of sensors. But what are they and what can they do, actually do? So here's a thing. You want to find out what's in your little concentrated e-vial? There's the sensors that they're tracking you with. If you, it, it, this is the, what they say under warrant, but you heard all the other places. They can already get in and, and they can track and do things that they want. And now you hear they can interject your files with other files, and you have no clue what's in those files. And you think that the government would be looking for ways to protect you against infiltration, but here's a, in the same week, Georgia passes anti-infosec legislation. Passes this now, folks. Despite uh, the full-throated objections of the cybersecurity community, the Georgia legislature has passed a bill that would open independent researchers who, ide would, uh, who identify vulnerabilities in computer systems to prosecution for up to a year in jail. So those of the, uh, those so-called white hats who would be out there looking for the vulnerabilities before doing that check could be thrown in jail in Georgia. If you didn't understand uh, what the problem is in this country and all the, in the globe about this technocratic future that they're forcing down your throat. They don't want you to know about this stuff for sure. And the so-called full-throated opposition. So there's your public comment. And so here's my observation about this. So you went in and you told the legislature that they made it and they made this law. And now what are you going to do about it, folks? Well, if you can frame the problem in a right you have, in a vulnerability, a corollary vulnerability that it creates, you can move to enjoin this, can't you? I don't know if anybody is, but that's what you could do. It's not over. Now, this is a more gray area. It's not so certain it might create an issue, so then maybe the court would have to be involved. I don't know. But we could all sit back and realize that the encroachment's going on stealthily uh, and just complain about it, we just whine all the time. Or we can take note of what's really going on and uh, form up in groups wherever we can and start to work organized against this the proper way. So, I mean, it, just, it, kind of, it was kind of almost a shocker. Why would you want to stop people from looking? That's like building a car and arresting the mechanics who find vulnerabilities in the operation. <laughs> and this is the reality of this caucusocracy we live in anymore. As we find out, you know, again, with even the Cloud Act, all that's not even good enough. It's the FSB can open up and threaten all these people for their, 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 their security uh, encryption codes. you got the Cloud Act. you got the FBI asking for intrusions. you got the, the court saying, we want your stuff. And then we forget the very first insult that uh, companies uh, can turn over the records and amounts of customer, uh, customer data to the United States, in this case, Amazon. Again, this is an older story. It's all been coming all together. Now I just pull it all together for you. So you go in and you do shopping and this and that, and they just track everything you do, and the government comes and asks, okay, Amazon hands it over. And you're saying, oh, but I don't do anything wrong. And I'm saying, but they're telling you they can find you out, track you back, get your address, and then inject your system with things if they don't like what you're doing. And by the way, you bought some chemicals from that we don't like you to buy. Maybe you're doing meth. Well, you did do some research about bum stocks. Maybe we have the ATF come down on you. I don't know. You're just vulnerable. Microsoft to ban offensive language and monitor your private account. Now, if it wasn't bad enough to Google and this, that, Microsoft is right. And then you see Windows 10, what they did. Phone home. Come on. This is just right in our face. Microsoft is cracking down on what people say while using their services online. According to the new services agreement written by the company, the tech giant is planning to ban accounts that use offensive language, in quotes, and will go through your private data to investigate users. And Microsoft uh, is warning customers of Office, Xbox, Box, Skype, 
and other products that the company is prohibiting offensive language and inappropriate contact, content starting May 1st. May Day. How's that, folks? Why you, why you wondered why I didn't like Skype and went off of that. And I'm willing to not talk with you all because of it. Same thing, I'm willing to drop mines if I have to. That's probably not going to be such a drop-dead thing. I just won't be able to participate in the rewards. But I have no use for it but other than to promote the content once I start. So what's the purpose? You're just going to have to find me at RLM for as long as Grimner will have me. Thank you, Grimner, for that. Oh, before I forget, uh, I understand that freedomsnetwork.com is having uh, going to have a, have to pay a bill. I didn't know about all this till here just a day or so. Uh, those of you using Freedoms Network, please uh, contribute to the server cost. It's about 360 bucks. Should have did this at the broad, leading into the broadcast. I forgot totally about it. But Freedoms Network, uh, social network, has no censorship whatsoever. Grimner runs the backside of that as well with Bo Diddy. They're, they're going to need the server costs for that. And uh, if you all can pitch in about a buck, for those of you that can, uh, maybe five if you, can, you know, if you can a little bit better, and we get those servers up, freedomsnetwork.com needs some donations. Otherwise, as, Freedom, as, as Grimner says, he's doing it for you all. He never thought to do a social network, but it's there. And, but if you're not willing to pay for it, maybe it's okay to go away. And I, I, I'm getting to the point where that's about where I'm at. If, if you're not willing to cough up some stuff to support these networks, then I guess it, it's meant to go away. I mean, this is what extinction's about, right? If you're going to ag agree to support Skype, Xbox, Microsoft, Google, Facepalm, Face plant, whatever, whoever, all these companies, and you're not going to do little guys like Freedoms Network, Real Liberty Media, UCY.TV. I don't know what, what to talk to you about, actually, folks. But here's the notice. Uh, Microsoft's going to be your uh, First Amendment partner. And, and without getting too much into it, thank you for the email that requested about going after this problem in free speech. And what I suggested, uh, really, just as a focus, I think it's still addressable, even though they're private companies. And I'm not going to go back all through that. The past the broadcast, I've, I've talked about how I would try to approach that. And, and so thank you for for come, having the concern and, and wanting to jump in on that email. I appreciate that you're doing that. But this is what needs to be done, folks. These people are, are getting away with all this nonsense. And your stuff can be scrutinized. And you you think that uh, you're not getting demon you're getting demonetized on YouTube and your stuff's being cut out? Well, now Microsoft's doing it just like we predicted. What Windows 10 would allow them to do? What's the what's the big secret here, folks? Why you, anybody even thought about it? And if you did think about it, why are you continuing to use products uh, for these uh, oppressive companies? What what do I use, folks? Well, I went to another company who developed an, an underwrit, uh, an open forum processor. I use OpenOffice.org stuff. They got handed off from Cisco, I think it was, onto a more open company. I haven't heard that program is accessible by anybody. So until I'm given that notice, I use an alternative product, folks. This is down to your applications. Your, and they call them apps now. They're built in with this nonsense. And I've been looking for things, uh, alternatives left and right. People apparently don't like, well, certainly with the phone stuff. People don't want to follow uh, follow around. They're not. We're not really together in order to do that, to keep ourselves private and anonymous by the fact that we're unpredictable and can move en masse to special things that are understood by all of us at the drop of a hat. That's another way to fight the guerrilla tactic in the field of the interwebs is not being too stuck to it. And so I'm just trying to show you there's other ways. So okay, so you're a guy who doesn't uh, nothing you do is no good, no is bad. The, 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 you're a woman that has no no ill will for 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 anybody. Uh, I told you a long time ago, and I and I'm you know every word I say is eventually going to be able to be put together any way someone wants to. I was able. I told you I was able to do. Not exactly this detail at all, but in video, making video, I could take someone's 15-minute speech and I could edit it down with certain little interesting little tricks, nothing special, just interesting little video tricks, cutaways, uh, 
inserts, all kinds of stuff. I could actually modify the statement uh, that a speaker could do. And I told you at the time I was attempting to take a 15 minute, I only had two minutes to show it. So I had to take a 15 minute speech and I hope, you know, it was my intention to make sure I, I, I represented what the speaker meant. But I took a 15 minute uh, speech and turned it to a two minute speech and know you could watch that video and never know that that's what I'd done. Well, it gets even better. And so I told you a long time ago, my voice here is going to be, and you see the Google, the Google tools, which are great, the transcript tool. I can always go back and see what I ever said, however misspelled it might be. Uh, it's there. They take a recording of your voice. I told you at some point they're going to take those parts, and they're going to make you say stuff that you didn't even know you said. JFK lost speech after assassination recreated by sound engineers now proves the point. Very fascinating. They took 180-something samples of a speech, or 800, thou let me go read this. According to the British newspaper, the, the Times, engineers managed to pull 116,777 soundbite units from 831 of JFK's speeches and radio addresses to bring the text to life of a, of a, of a speech he never said because he was assassinated, but he had printed. And they took it, and they took all these sound bite pieces, and they created, recreates his speech by his voice. And, you know, there are some, there are some, some spots that you can tell. But that's just a matter of time to fix, folks. They were able to take a speech he never verbalized, and they now recreated. I have the link for you. It's pretty, kind of, it's pretty neat. But it, what I told you about being able to get, uh, you, they take your voice off the Internet. They take your voice from Facebook, wherever that little concentrated eval device is, where the microphone is, wherever you are in your house. They take your voice, and they now are telling us they can splice that together and say stuff that you never said. In this case, he intended to say it. He never got the chance, JFK being assassinated. For those of you that don't know, he got assassinated. He was the President of the United States and got assassinated. A, a, a sound sampling system construction has been made to have him sound like he's stating a, a text he never, a speech he never made. It was called the JFK Unsilenced Project. Fascinating, cool stuff. But this is what they have the power to do for those of you that says, oh, I don't do anything wrong. I'm not here to do anything wrong. Folks, I've told you they can make it look like you've done something wrong. So my prediction of that, it's not such a prediction. You can see the writing on the wall. Years ago is now proven. All my voice for myself, all these years, what do you think they could come up with, folks? You don't think it's above adding things in to take your perception, change your perception, give yourself something to do? No, the YouTube will add information from Wikipedia to videos about conspiracies. They will input on your content what they want. It is all the point here, essentially. YouTube will add information from Wikipedia of all places. This is the, this is the, the monument of truth, isn't it? The truthiness, I guess. Wikipedia, from Wikipedia to videos about popular conspiracy theories to provide alternative viewpoints on controversial subjects. Its CEO said today, this is a few weeks ago, CEO, uh, YouTube CEO Susan uh, Wasicki said that uh, these uh, text boxes, which the company is calling information cues, the virtual reality impositions, adverse shock therapy, <laughs> information cues, uh, could begin appearing on conspiracy-related videos within the next couple of weeks. We well, don't need to say more. They will certainly import their information onto yours is a proof that they do that. My, I think my question on, on all that was, well, are they going to do that to, the, to every other piece of content? And if not, then aren't they acting at that as that propaganda tool that that Congressional Act forbids? which is another aspect of how I said you can attack this when they start censoring you and they don't censor everyone. They become a domestic propaganda tool and they infringe by, do, by, by, by interfering with your content. They're doing it to silence 
ad adverse uh, alternative views, which is exactly what they're doing uh, to to put this on alternative viewpoints, is to dis to su to diminish the content re um, representation made by the provider, the producer, is one way to approach the the infringement that a private company does when it's publicly offered. Now, in a way, you can see where if they were private, took membership of some kind of thing, some other thing, whatever it is, that they might be able to do this. But when they hold themselves out to the public, my view in the court cases and things for other areas, subject matters, are they cannot discriminate. The very fact of saying alternative viewpoints will be placed over your representation, your, your speech, your presentation, is a diminishment. And they admit it's to an alternative viewpoint. Now, I'm not even talking about the problem here. Where they, what, who is supposed to make the decision of what alternative and what conspiracy and what theory is and what all this, all this nuance? This is what you have to cut through. You determine what that is. You don't leave it to them. But anyway, so they're telling you they're willing to throw this information on you uh, that they deem uh, whatever they deem is going to be. I'm saying if you remain crickets, then you, well, you deserve what you get. Now, we could be running around the Internet finding all the new homes. I know there's three or four new ones. Folks, I don't know if I can keep up, tell you the truth. I really don't know. I'm, I mean, physically, I, my mind just... It's not integrated that way anyway. It never wanted. It never was in MySpace. It wasn't on Facebook. I only got Twitter because what someone said. Well, why don't you just jump in Twitter? And thank you to Free and Slave for saying go to Minds because it did preserve that there, and we have got lots of viewers. But you know now we see that the truth may be a little bit more 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 stark as to the reality. Not a judgment. Just the reality is what it is. We're conditioned by the technocrats' future that the future they want and that we are not responding to, to stop it. Now, I guess that's the only thing I always have to say. I mean, are you going to step up and stop the crime against you? Or are you going to act as an accessory to it and continue? And again, I come to the end of my tabs. i got so much more to go. All this intrusion where I wanted to talk a little bit more. I don't have the way of the time about where the machine is now provided with a license by the regulators to harm you without liability. And you need to understand that's another integrated problem that we are not even talking about yet. It has to do, and I won't be able to get to it, has to do with these autonomous cars. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to t touch much about it, but you're going to understand that uh, what the way the way the rules apply is that if the, if the machine was not programmed, it cannot be found in fault for what it doesn't do. And yet you can. And that is a prejudice. I don't even know where we begin to, to look at that. But that's what's coming up. And so all these gadgets, the Internet of Things, all these gadgets are going to have no fault. And part of it's because you keep consenting into it. And partly because they keep telling you, well, we're in there. Where is it? What's inside? Intel's inside. Was it runs you, a, or the car runs you into a barrier? Well, we don't know. Was it us? Was it the NSA? Was it some hacker? Was it just because you did? We didn't like the colored dress you ordered, or the cup of coffee you ordered the other day. We're going to get rid of your type. We didn't like the speech that you stated. We didn't like the video you put put up. We're run. We're going to run your type into a wall. How many reporters and journalists have we heard about that? So it's not so bad. Anyway, the machines are not going to have. Uh, much of a liability in the future, and that's not going to be right. We're going to have to stop that as well. Thank you for tuning in today. I hope something I said will inspire you to move on forward and get roll up your sleeves and do something. Grimner, thank you for what you do at reallibertymedia.com. Again, donations to freedomnetwork.com to get it going. If it's not done within a few, two weeks, three weeks, it's, it's going down, folks. If there's no payment uh, for the service for a year, it's not happening. You, Jules at ucy.tv, thank you for what you do in uh, keeping this uh, broadcast and simulcast, broadcast, recast, and all those cast casts. And I'll be with you next week, Tech Diffs and Nature Willing. Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, Journey with Purpose.
that's what opening up a can of whoop-ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop-ass. <laughs>